Welcome to Storybound. This is going to be a review of Dune 2021 by Denis Villeneuve. It will also uh, partly have a spoiler talk towards the end, which will have spoilers for both the movie as well as the books and how they kind of compare with each other. Uh, the hype for this series has been massive. If you haven't heard of it, you've probably been living under a rock for the past few months. The internet's going crazy. Um, there's some pretty hot takes whether you loved it or not. How people feel about it, the length of the movie, the tone of the movie, everything about it, whether or not it's a Star Wars ripoff, you can name it. Uh, it's out there on the internet. But my main influence of this is actually my neighbor. Uh, he was beyond amped for this movie, let me the book, uh, helped push me into getting that, that book read and completed, kind of leading up to the film, and I loved that book. Um, I'll probably be putting a review out on that book at some point once I finish Messiah. I think I wanted to do the two of those together, um, which hopefully I'll be reading in the next month or so. My initial thoughts of this movie are I probably need to rewatch it. <laughs> um, because my brain was just pumping out comparisons between it and the book and how I felt about it and how it was made and the comparisons of it were kind of overwhelming. I found they do the same thing with Marvel movies where I have a fairly strong background knowledge. Um, I haven't read a ton of books that have been adapted to films. Um, things like Lord of the Rings when those originally came out. I just got to go in and enjoy those. Um, but with Dune, yeah, just thinking about the, the pacing, comparison, how the characters were, um, the world, everything, and, and kind of how I envisioned it in my head, I think for the most part was great. Uh, this, this movie had a fantastic tone. Um, I love the cast, and it looked even better than I pictured in my head, uh, especially the Harkonnens. Um, they were brutal, they were badass, and they, they were fantastic in this movie, and I kind of love having that really brutal, aggressive style that they are, their armor and everything, and that'll kind of translate to, to kind of my reading moving forward, so I'm definitely looking forward to that, and they really, really nailed it. I believe the characters, um, I loved how dark and gritty some of the scenes were, uh, especially with the Bene Gesserits, uh, really kind of earlier on in the movie, especially the one with Paul, with the kind of a famous scene early on. I'm really glad that such kind of a famous um, trademark scene of Dune that happens in the first book was kind of so faithfully portrayed in a movie and that it translated so amazingly on that. Uh, I was pretty sold once, once that kind of went through and I think a lot of people were probably looking forward to that scene, how that played out, and find out what's in the box. The way the powers are portrayed uh, was great and mostly works. I did have a problem with the way the shields were portrayed to some extent, not visually. I thought they were super cool. Um, I liked the, the sound of them. I liked the kind of phasing nature of them, kind of phasing out and then kind of powering in and going away. I thought that was cool. It was more about kind of the impact and the way things hit the shields. Um, not so much while they were up. That was cool. I like I liked that. I liked the whole thing where they'd go red when they were failing. Um, it was just more, I would have liked it during kind of a fatal blow. If there was a bit more of like a pop um, when that happened, that would kind of emphasize that and really pack it. Because I felt like later on um, there is some fighting that involves the shields, and it was a little bit lacking for me when we had some of the killing blows that were happening there. And I feel like just having something like that, like a snap, or whether it was a sound or, or a visual crack, um, really would have benefited um, selling those. Another minor concern I had with this was uh, the color grading in some of the scenes. Um, when they're back on their home world, um, I really would have loved to see some more kind of lush colors pop um, a little bit more emphasis on that uh, really kind of popping those those kind of the greens and the blues and everything kind of being really lush um, back on kind of the Atreides homeworld um, then that would have been kind of a more sharp contrast when we finally get to Avarakis and we have more of kind of the oranges and the grays and things are a little bit more muted um, I did love the lighting and all of that but I did find that 
Not that I disagree with the art style. It was a little bit muted, and I think it would have helped sold kind of the rugged nature of Arrakis and kind of how brutal and harsh it is. Um, they did definitely show some colors and everything when they were uh, on their home world, but I would have liked to see it pop just a little bit more. That is a little bit nitpicky, but even my wife pointed it out and I have to agree. There is some other pacing stuff that would honestly be a little bit spoilery, um, but for the people who wanted my kind of baseline review, honest, uh, faithful retelling of the book, I think it does an awesome job doing that. Um, it nails the characters, it nails the setting, um, the tone, and kind of improves on some of the things that are in the book, I think, to some extent, and kind of sells it, um, especially kind of with the comments I made about the Harkonnens. Um, they are way more intense and fantastic um, in the books than how I compared, how I kind of envisioned them. So I really appreciated that. I thought the movie did a good job of elevating certain things like that and really pushing it forward. And I feel like the amazing cast probably had a lot to do with that as well not just the filming, kind of the cinematography, sound design, and that sort of thing. But yeah, I'm beyond excited to get to the second uh, half of book one. Uh, Villeneuve did say he wanted to do a trilogy, which would be amazing. We did get the announcement finally that Dune 2 is happening, so Dune 1 did perform uh, kind of to the standards that the studio was hoping for, so that's fantastic. Can't wait uh, to see the next one, which I guess would be probably in 23, 24. Um, either way, can't wait. So yeah, if you haven't already, check it out. Get your mask on. Uh, be safe. Uh, otherwise, pop on your jammies, uh, grab some popcorn, chill out uh, on your couch with HBO Max, and um, enjoy Dune. It's fantastic. So let's talk spoilers. Uh, my biggest gripe, and this is me nitpicking, is I feel like Duke Leto um, got robbed a little bit in this movie. Um, I love Oscar Isaac for one, <laughs> so I was sad Oscar would go um, during this series, but I really love Duke Leto in the books. I loved his character. I loved the way he interacted with people and how he was and, and kind of how good natured of a person he was um, throughout that series. I say series, but book one. Um, I don't feel like I got this from this movie. I did like his character. I thought he was great. And he comes across as being very noble and proud and, and grandiose. Um, and also a good person. And we do get some people recognizing that in the film as well. But in the book, I feel like we had way more time with him kind of have some talks with Paul, um, the way he handles the Fremen, those interactions. They, they, you just got to like soak in the scene a little bit more and understand what type of person he was. And that kind of conflict in him of kind of knowing what Paul could be and what his wife wants from Paul and what he would hope that Paul would want to do when he grows older. And although that like I said, that is in the movie. I feel like in the book, we just got so much more with him and it just felt more devastating um, when the assassination attempt happened at that point. But still really enjoyed it. Uh, Oscar Isaac is fantastic. Character was awesome. But yeah, just, just nitpicking here. <laughs> um, I know a lot of people would be a little upset if this was a four-hour movie, but... I would not be one of those people. Paul's use of his powers was super fun. Um, I really enjoyed kind of the voice modulation they had on kind of their uh, suggestion that they use on people. Uh, it did put me off at first, but I thought it felt kind of very Dune. It's very rugged and aggressive and kind of otherworldly. So it did grow on me and I actually really enjoyed it as they were using it later on. And it's going to be kind of how I picture it moving forward. Um, as I kind of dig into the, the, the future novels and Messiah and children of Dune and so on. I liked how many of the prophecies we got to see, how it kind of show implied that that would be how things go shows wariness, 
about his friends and trying to protect them and go with them and help them out and what kind of person Paul is. And then later on as he starts to realize that they're not entirely true and lets people kind of know that in the Bene Gesserit that they're not entirely true as well. And just how that plays out and his is <laughs> what I guess upset people is uh, Zendaya's character. One of the Fremen not really being in the film but appearing within his visions and that sort of thing. I know some people said that those characters were a bit of a waste in book one or in movie one, but I loved their presence. I thought it was awesome. Gives you something to look forward to. And I've already kind of gushed about the Harkonnens anyway, so I can't wait to see uh, more of them in episode two. The Bene Gesserit as well were basically perfect to me. I hated them so much <laughs> when they were on screen. Uh, they were creepy. It was kind of tense and intimidating when they were on screen. I'm not sure who the actor was um, who played kind of the main mother who shows up to uh, test Paul. Um, I'll probably look that up later, but the presentation of them, the clothing, the way they talk, uh, it was great. I, I, I really enjoyed them. And uh, yeah, I can't wait for more of them as we kind of go forward. I don't feel like we get a ton in the original series, but but yeah, they were fantastic, and I loved the way they were portrayed on film. The representation of technologies um, was great as well. Uh, I really liked the shields, as I kind of said earlier, but with that kind of minor nitpick about the breaking of the shields, I would have loved like a, just some impact when those kind of crack, um, especially when Leto kind of gets stabbed in the back having that really kind of crack and show that impact I think would have sold it more. It, it is a little creepy that it just kind of pops through and it happens and it, it, it kind of fit the tone of that scene but I really would have loved to like I said just a bit of a pop or a crack or something um, when it was popping the shields would have really sold it to me even just from a sound design perspective if it wasn't like a, a visual cue as well. The ornithopters were actually fantastic as well. I really liked kind of a, the thumping of the wings of those as they were going. I kind of geeked out a little bit about that uh, sound. How, when I saw them kind of like uh, go from the retracted stance into their forward and I was thinking about, oh wow, like these are gonna sound really cool um, when we get on film. And then they started kind of doing that like that thump, 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 thump. I thought that was great. It was super sci-fi and I, lo I, I love those. I geeked out for a little bit <laughs> about the ornithopters. So fantastic. and. Yeah, the overall design of this film was great. The armor, the shields, the the, the tech, the, the las guns, the, the carrier shells that were coming down from the sky and the, the big battle at the towards the, the middle end climax of the film. Um, all of those kind of rail guns and the rockets firing, and it, it was all super cool and I, I loved it. Whatever 3D team <laughs> designed all that stuff, you guys are great. Bring you guys back uh, for film two. <laughs> Pay them a ton of money because all of that was, it was so good. What I did find interesting is the Doctor's uh, betrayal. In the book, I hate that guy. Like, I hated that character. I was mad. I saw pictures of kind of what he looked like in the movies before. Posted on Twitter, I was like, F this guy. Like really mad about it but in the movie um they managed to make me feel kind of bad for him i didn't have kind of the same emotion that i responded in the book so i was a little surprised about that but that was actually kind of cool and i kind of liked that divergent and i could kind of see how people might feel that way when they read the book and obviously that's kind of the art direction they decided to take for the film and yeah that that was super cool uh bautista and skarsgård as the Harkonnens is amazing. Like they're they're so good at that role. Dave Bautista lately has been absolutely killing it, and the Scars Guards, like no matter which one, um, just kind of kill it in films and TV. And I, I love seeing them in anything. And they were fantastic as um, I guess it'd be the Duke or the the Emperor of the Harkonnens was super creepy. And I love the kind of raising and the floating and just everything about that guy was was awesome. And I can't wait for them to kind of get more screen time in the second film. Uh, David uh, Delsmashian, I'm going to kill that name. Um, this dude's been having a crazy year between this and Suicide Squad. I love seeing him in here. Uh, he was fantastic. I really loved his character. It was very subtle, kind of that kind of 
assistant to the Lord type character that is shifty and I thought he played that super subtle. I, I really enjoyed it and yeah, props to that guy for just killing it this year. But yeah, can't wait to see these characters shine uh, in future movies. I really hope we get the trilogy that uh, Dallas Villeneuve is asking for. Um, I know we're at least getting the sequel that's got greenlit. Go ahead, Greenlit, Dune Messiah, let's do it. Let's get the kind of Atreides arc crushed off. I don't exactly know where the kind of capping point is. I hear a lot of people do kind of stop at Messiah and there's kind of more arcs going on after that. But so yeah, Dune, I loved it. I can't wait till 22, 23, 24, 25, whenever we get the next movie, I don't care. Um, I'm ready for it. Probably won't be able to watch it on HBO Max, probably check it out in a theater but yeah when we finally get a sequel can't wait if you like my content please comment down below let me know what you'd like to see next i'd love to know what you thought about dune as well um, please like and subscribe for more weekly videos and as always have a good one